Hello people of the Web and YouTube, the Big here. Today I'm going to be guiding you through how to set up SMB streaming with a flash drive and an old router. Now with that said, not all flash drives and not all old routers are compatible with each other. And in fact, not all old routers let you stream files over the USB port on them. So with that said, you'll have to explore your router's homepage to determine whether or not you can do what I'm about to show you today in today's guide. But if you can, this video should help you out. Just know on all these kinds of routers that are available, every router has its own setting or menu or difference in fact, so this guide may or may not help you out greatly, but it should get you in the right direction. Now with that said, you need to determine if your router will work for this, and if your router doesn't work for this, you can possibly maybe mod in some modded firmware to get this all to work out in the end. If your router doesn't seem to support SMB streaming, I recommend you guys to take a look at Pirate Box. It's free firmware for certain types of routers out there that you can flash onto your router in order to let the same thing kind of happen that we're about to demonstrate today. Now with that said, my router already supports SMB multimedia streaming, and this means if I plug in a USB flash drive into the router, I can send the files over the router to my computer or to my PS2. But to get it to work on the PS2, you first got to set up the flash drive, which I will explain later on. But for now, let's just FAT format 32R flash drive and plug it into our router. And from here, you want to hop on over to your router's homepage and just look for anything that says like it says multimedia or file streaming. Now in my case, it's listed as multimedia, and there are a few different options. One of the options lets you view what you currently have plugged into the router, and as you can see, mine is labeled USB 1 underscore 1, meaning there's a USB drive and USB port 1. And yes, my router has multiple USB ports, however, I will only be using one for this tutorial. Now with that said, if we go down to the next option in the multimedia panel on my specific router, you get the ability to set up the USB drive for multimedia streaming files. Now to do this, it's fairly simple. All you gotta do is type in the, the USB port and the USB name that we saw on the previous page. In my case, it's USB 1 underscore 1. And from here, since my router isn't too smart enough to do this, you have to do a backslash and give it a name. Now, in my case, I called it PS2, and what this signifies is the root of my flash drive. What I mean is when we get onto our OPL later, our root with all our contents and our games on the flash drive will be right there and available. You shouldn't have to name anything else with an OPL. Anyway, now that we got that done, you just gotta add a username and a password, and to simplify things, all I did was type in PS2 and PS2 again for the username and the password. And after I'd done that, I just hit apply and turned on SMB streaming, and the flash drive side of things is pretty much set up and ready to go. I wish there was a lot more I could tell you when it comes to setting up your flash drive to be streamed over the USB like this. However, all routers are different, and this is the best I can get this tutorial bit in order to help you out. And sorry if that made no sense, it's really hard to explain. Not all routers have the same kind of windows, menus, and settings and such, so I tried to be as neutral with this as I can, and I hope in the end it did help you out. Now from here, as you can see, I got my flash drive in the computer. You don't really need to name the flash drive at all. I just left the default name, LexRG. And from here, you just want to make sure you have these five folders, and you don't really need to worry about these files. These are for loading in games bigger than 4 gigabytes because for those of you that don't know there's a file limit when it comes to the file system of FAT32 you can't have files bigger than 4 gigabytes on so what that means is if you have a game bigger than 4 gigabytes you gotta split it into parts which is what these files are so let's just ignore these files here for now and just take a look at these few folders now as you can see we got a DVD folder and a CD folder and from here we want to drag in our PS2 ISOs if they're under 4 gigabytes. And to simplify things here later up I'm going to rename this and give it a bad file name just to show you how um, OPL Manager works. Anyway now that we got our game in our DVD folder uh, we can just open up OPL Manager. There isn't much more we got to do, and if you guys want to do PS1 games, I'll have to do a future video on that. 
because it's a little bit difficult to set up and it requires this CD folder here. But since I don't have any PS1 games right now on me, even though I got a ton of PS1 games, trust me, I'll have to make this tutorial for that part of this guide later. But yeah, for now, let's open up OPL Manager and it should automatically identify the game with the bad name. As you can see, if I hit OK, it will call it free because that's what I named the ISO, free. Even though I got this game for free, that's why I named it free. But yeah, whatever. Anyway, you select it, you hit get title from DB, and most of the time this does pretty good. But if it doesn't get the correct name, you can just type in your own name here, and then hit try update file name, and it will ask you if that's okay, and you just want to hit yes. And from there, as you can see, it renamed the file successfully, both in the OPL manager and on our flash drive. Now, for those of you that are curious what this little bit here is before the name, that's the file that the PS2 will launch when you boot up the game. If I were to open this disk image up, you can see SLUS211-9, and that's why it puts that little bit there right before the name of the game. Now, just to not mess myself up here, I'm going to eject the image I mounted. You can just ignore what I did there. And we're going to hop back over to OPL Manager. Now, from here, you can hit Batch Options and Art Download and just hit Start. And this should download all the cover art for all your games. And as you can see, I currently have two games on here, although this one doesn't work at the moment. But it still seems to load it up fine nonetheless. And as you can see, our art has indeed loaded as well. Now with that said, now that we got our game or games on, we just hit, we just got to hit File, Exit, and you can pretty much just eject our flash drive out. I recommend doing it the safe way as to not um, fragment the flash drive, but since I'm not actually using this current flash drive with my PS2, I just pulled it out. It doesn't really matter to me. But yeah, with that said, it's pretty much set up and ready to use. The only thing is if you have a game bigger than 4 gigabytes, like I said, you will have to use something called USB Utility version 2.2 and I will make a future video on how to put games bigger than 4 gigabytes onto your flash drive. But for now, let's plug our flash drive back into our router and hop on over to OPL to explain some of the settings and things that you need to set up on the actual OPL software on the PS2. So okay, I actually gotta disclaim some things. I currently have my PS2 here, but I'm not able to capture it at the moment. So what you guys will be seeing is old footage that I recorded on an older version of OPL. But don't worry, it's the same settings and menus and such that are even in the new OPL version. So everything should work out for you and this guy should still help you out whether you're working on a, a newer version of OPL or not. But yeah, with that said, the first thing you want to do is go over to the settings page and turn Ethernet device start mode to auto. For those of you not familiar with what OPL does when you set a device for auto or manual, that basically tells OPL whether to automatically boot from that source the list of games or not. Now you could set it from auto or manual, it's up to you, just know if you go under and set it to manual, you'll have to push a button every time you want to load up your games from your Ethernet, or your router I should say. Anyway, once we got all that set up, you just want to hop on over to the network settings page and just go under the IP section and change the IP to the IP of the router. And in my case, that is 192.168.254.254. And from there, you can go down to share and just type in PS2 and then put username PS2 and then password PS2. And you don't really have to touch anything else, although if you're having issues, I recommend looking it up on some forums, because changing some of these settings might help you out. But you shouldn't need to touch them, there's no need to, so once we got all our stuff in, just hit connect at the bottom, and you should automatically connect up to your router with your USB drive plugged in and get all your games off of it. However, if you're failing to connect, like I said, just mess with some settings and try double checking everything you already set up to make sure everything still works. In my case, everything still works, so I'm going to back out, save my settings, and once OPL reloads, or if I close OPL and open it, the game should automatically pop up and populate the list on my PS2 within OPL. 
Now from here everything should play fine, however if you're experiencing issues try to update OPL. I know the OPL had a great update recently where you can actually put the PS2 boot logos on, as well as turn off debug colors and turn on VMC and many other different kinds of options, so it's kind of worth checking out. But yeah, like I said, if you're having any kind of stuttering or issues, check the PS2 game compatibility list just to make sure it's not the game itself that's having the issues with an OPL. And if it's not the game itself having issues, um, it could be a many different things causing the problem. Sorry for the poor wording there. If it's lagging, check the router. Some routers have a data limit or something on them, so the USB load's a little bit slower than normal which won't do you any good. In my case, the router is a USB 3.0 port, and I currently have a USB 3.0 flash drive plugged into it, so I'm getting the theoretical maximum bandwidth or speed for the USB to my PS2 over SMB. But yeah, with that said, like I said, it's a lot of trial and error, and hopefully this guide can help you out. I wish I could have made more of a tutorial, but sadly, I just don't have the time, and plus, when it comes down to the router stuff, I'm just not good at explaining things, because all routers have different names for different menus and such for things you need to change. So like I said, just pretty much just play around with your router. If you think it has the options in the menus, try to match everything that I showed on screen, and you should be pretty much good to go. Anyway, if this video helped you out, let me know, and if, you, if it didn't and you just need help in general, let me know down below and I'll help you out in the comments. But yeah, for now I'm going to leave today's video off here at DTPK, signing off. Peace. Go over some of the setup settings and things for free McBoot as well as OPL and just show you. R4 card in the DS, you will turn it on and it will either boot up automatically or you'll have to...